So good evening everyone and thank you for being here. Today we are looking at uh, an interesting informative evening on the Sam show by Punjab Grill BKC and Chef Amitesh Vardhvidhi. Thank you Chef for having us. Thank you so much. Um, uh, our topic for today is using healthy ingredients in traditional cuisine or traditional cooking. So we are going to learn a lot of how you can actually use healthier ingredients than what you use in your normal cooking either at home or at a restaurant and how you choose wisely at restaurants and a lot of other things. Um, so we have with us today uh, Payal Kothari who is an integrative nutritionist and a gut health coach. Welcome Payal Thank you. to the show. Thank uh, you so two much. lovely panelists, I'm going to be moderating the session and um, I'm going to be learning a lot, so I'm sure all of y'all will also. Um, we start off with where Punjab Grill BKC is located. Punjab Grill opened up a while back and they have a lot of different kind of, you know, cuisine which actually uh, serves different kind of people. Chef, can you tell us more about that? Yes, Punjab Grill serves uh, food from the undivided Punjab. Undivided Punjab takes uh, into consideration whatever was before the partition. Very well, that's what our real cuisine is. That's what we want to focus and that's what we want to bring to all our customers. Our Punjab being all on the northwestern frontier of India has been a center of invasions. Yes. Uh, there have been invasions from the Peshwas, from uh, Afghans, Everybody had come into India or probably Marathas going towards Peshawar. There has been a lot of cultural exchange, food exchange, cuisine exchange, traditions exchange, languages exchange. So Punjab has a lot, very rich heritage there. And we want to keep everything intact the way it is. Food evolves. We, we were speaking yeah, the food, yeah. food and food cuisines evolves. keep yes. evolving. If we look, we take it very back towards uh, 13th and 14th centuries when the books were starting to uh, be penned down. The cooks have written that they have been using spices and uh, ginger, garlic and a lot of herbs and spices to marinate the meat so that the smell does not come. There have been aromatic spices, there have been herbs so that the smell does not come. Yes. Uh, there have been spices to kill because the refrigeration was not there. Right, yeah. To preserve uh, the to food. Preserve, to preserve, yeah, it, yeah. yes. So everything has come into place because of the habitat. But we've, we've grown. There has been technology improvement, there has been scientific improvement. Yes. Uh, the food has evolved a lot. And we don't need a lot of those things. We can bring them down, we can tone them down according to our habitat. That's their habitat. Now it's our lifestyle. That's what yes. we adapt it to. Yes. Right? Yeah. Uh, we, we are toning it down. The, the cuisines for Maharajas have been using a lot of cashews. Yes. A lot of dry nuts, dry fruits. That's because they want to go through the full day just to keep the energy going. Right now, we are based on computers. We, we have our desk. It's a desk have, job. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of yeah. different kind of a stress coming in. So we do not need so much cholesterol. We do not probably need so much of fats to to keep us going. Yeah. So this thing needs consideration and we do consider it. And uh, our food now it revolves around what is in that belt, whatever was undivided Punjab, that belt, what is being cooked in homes now. Yeah. That's also Punjabi food. Uh, that's all healthy food. That's all what whatever grows around us. So that's what we are focusing in. Yeah, so local and seasonal local produce. Local seasonal produce, yes. Oh, is, totally. what, is what you use, yes. Yes, yes. yes. So, Payal, gut health, let us know more about that. I am not really aware too much about it and I'm sure all of us are not. So we'd love to hear what is gut health okay. and how does it work? Sure, so as the chef said that when humans came into uh, planet Earth, but uh, bacteria, came before humans came in and we have these guys all over all over our body we have bacteria in our mouth we have bacteria in our hair we have bacteria all over yeah. out of which 100 trillion bacteria are in our gut 
Okay. So is that the maximum concentration exactly. of bacteria yes. in the body? Yes. So okay. it's like a concentration camp of the good bacteria and the bad bacteria. So these guys have to be balanced. There has to be a symbiosis between the good and the bad. Like the yin and the yang. Yeah. Like the sweet and the sour or the savory. Like yes. in fruits. Yes. So similarly our gut needs that balance. So uh, most people don't realize that there is a dysbiosis. Okay. There's not a symbiosis. So the gut, the bad bacteria is constantly multiplying because of environmental pollution, stress, yes. bad food habits, yes. you know, lots of refined sugar yeah. or white flowers, everything white, too much of sodium, too yeah. much of sugar, too much of white flour, too much of white bread. So lot all of that, which a lot takes of place. processing, basically. Yeah. So all that bashing has taken a beating in our gut, and all the digestion, assimilation, uh, excretion, detoxification happens in the gut. And the gut is not our stomach, which yeah. everybody thinks yeah. is our stomach. Yeah. Where is it located? It's the small intestine. Small intestine. Okay. Yes, it's the small intestine. Okay. So that's where everything happens, and that's where our hormones are produced. 90% of the serotonin, 80% of dopamine, all these happy hormones are produced here. So if you're not eating the happy food, you're not going to be happy. And if the gut is not happy, your brain is not happy. That's why this is called the second brain. Yes. So I'm very keen on feeding the second brain all the time. Okay. So that the first brain is migraine free, inflammation free, and uh, the surface area of our gut is as big as a tennis court. So we open the surface area of the gut. It's as huge as a tennis court. So if you guys can imagine the gut bacteria jumping up and down in the tennis court. Every time there's sugar coming, pill popping coming, refined food coming, the bad bacteria is multiplying and the good is dying and vice versa. If we put in the good stuff, our good herbs, our good spices, turmeric, ginger, the superfood, superfluids, lots of water, fruits, vegetables, plant-based meals, it's going to multiply the good bacteria. Yeah. So, Chef, do you incorporate this within the, I mean, we've got an array of food on the table. Uh, do you incorporate, uh, you know, all these things which actually strengthens the gut as so far yes. as thing? Yes, yes, we do. Uh, just recently, we had the winter menu on. Okay. Now, we were serving the uh, Kali Gajar Ki Kanji there. Okay. Now, Kanji is made by, uh, yes, we keep uh, just in a lukewarm water. You, you put ferment in your, it. Yeah. Exactly. You yeah. put in your mustard. Yeah. You put in uh, some salt. You put in your uh, black carrots. Yeah. You leave it out in the sun. Oh, yeah. Wow. And that, that's how uh, the, the fermentation becomes is a probiotic. the best totally. probiotic for yeah. our You, you leave yeah. it out yeah. for three days. And, uh, Fantastic. So it helps in uh, uh, digestion, it helps as an appetizer, yeah. so ev everything. And it's delicious. It's delicious. And, and that's also seasonal again. It's seasonal so it again. Yes. Advantages. Um, you know, um, I, I do hear that at Punjab Grill, you all replace a lot of, in, in some of the dishes, a lot of healthier ingredients to, you know, traditional, in traditional cooking yes. or yes. Indian cooking or cooking at home. So yes. You know, how do you all do it at the restaurant? How can one replicate it at home? You know, what can we do and pile you also chip in yeah, as a, sure. to live a healthier kind of, you know, eating habits and cuisine and life? Totally. I, I think home cooking is the best cooking. Yeah. And that's what we want to replicate in the restaurants yeah. rather than the other way around. Yeah. What we do in a restaurant is more organized and we do it in a scientific way. For example, if we are doing a chicken curry, instead of using a regular chicken which has been fed with steroids or anything else or medicines for, for its uh, yeah. longer production, we are using Kadaknath. Now, Kadaknath is an indigenous breed. But that is a new introduction. It's so, an introduction, but that's yes. how we are substituting a regular chicken with, with, with a, a chicken Kadakna. that's so healthier. Yeah. Yes, it's yes. a better one. Yes. For vegetables, now, uh, a lot of restaurants are focusing, if you say vegetarian, they will say, okay, we have paneer. But paneer is not the only vegetarian dish. We've yes. got, uh, uh, we've got shakarkandi, we've got karela, we've yes. got uh, dudi, we yes. have. And spinach so, during yes, season. Spinach, alu, alu palak hai. Yeah. We have uh, kiya tori, the sabji that's there in the menu. So, yes. Uh, ghiya, yeah. the, the bottle gourd. 
it's very fibrous it's used uh, as raw it's used cooked it's it's the one of the best vegetables uh, that we have yeah and uh, a lot of restaurants they shy away from using, from using such it, a humble yeah. vegetable yes. uh, we we bring all these things in uh, to the menu to the table so fiber needs to flow in along with the protein yes. so there's a balance that yes. that's required it's yes, yes. the macronutrient yes. balance totally. is very important yeah because totally. nowadays a lot of people eat out so if we look at all of us and i'm sure all of us we eat out more often than we used to yes and if you look at the double income no kids the ding room they're yes. eating out all the time either ordering out so of course there is a trend of cooking at home but yes. that is a slow process still it's so convenient to go out and eat or order out from somewhere and i guess that time also you have to be careful as to what to choose you know yes of course no so i was asking payal how do you as chef said a lot of this is used in the restaurant how do you replicate it at home yeah what do you do like in place of white rice can i you have something healthy of course yeah. we all know brown yes, rice yes. and this i make blue rice okay and it's really great and uh, it's a secret i'll share it with you later chef not the blue pea <laughs> no the blue rice okay so blue rice so uh, we do i do i use blue rice i use black rice i use a lot of brown rice and instead of my i'm gluten intolerant myself so i use a lot of different uh, swaps like nachni jowar bajra mung dal atta i do a lot of quinoa flour uh, i use cauliflower as my base sometimes okay. as my Instead roti rice, yeah. so yeah i do cauliflower rice so yeah. i do a lot of food swaps yeah and um, i'm so glad you said that fiber and protein and all of that is very important so i'm glad punjab grill is doing this combination and you know permutation and also uh, samir as you asked um, most people are eating out more often than yeah, yeah, earlier are. right yeah yeah so um, i believe in this um, it's called a pareto principle uh, it's a ratio of 80 20 so 80% of the good food and 20% of the not so good food and i even suggest that in the 20% if you still eat healthy versions like coming to a punjab grill coming to a better restaurant than eating out of some you know not so um uh conscious restaurant like how yours is so even that 20% you can be a little more healthier yes. and even in that 20% you can pick high fiber foods yes you know like the sweet potato very well it's great it's just potato's got a bad name but it's so alkaline yeah. Yeah. it's so great for you it's got it's a root vegetable so all the bacteria is intact and you're putting that in your gut for it to multiply so it's a win win situation you're going you know you're going out yeah you're with your friend you're socializing you're releasing serotonin dopamine you're doing all of that and you're being healthy with better food choices yeah i think it's a fab idea it's the best way to entertain it's the best way the corporate culture has become like this yeah. yes people just after yeah, I mean, work look at it i mean today it's busy tuesday on a tuesday it's, <laughs> it's packed like, i i was like, surprised coming here it's like completely packed yeah it's yeah. packed and people are having a good time so yeah, why not exactly. yes. you know they're networking they're bonding over good food which yeah. is great yeah no absolutely i think that's brilliant what i feel is any menu that you go to any restaurant you can actually make wise choices very of course so if there's a whole menu there it's it's your duty and your thing to choose wisely yeah, and true. maybe follow the 80 20 principle yeah so but you know? i tell my clients that if you're going to any of those places where they they serve only pav bhaji and idli dosa i can't help you there go ahead eat binge yeah but if you're going to a gourmet restaurant or yeah. a three star five star restaurant they send me menus and then we all pick yeah so for them it becomes second nature to start picking okay this is good this is not good they start picturizing the food and they make healthier choices which is very easy to do totally. here yeah yes it so is so in in fact a restaurant like punjab grill i see they do a lot of barbecue yes if if i've seen maybe in the tandoor and yes, maybe yes. sheeks and the chicken exactly. and a lot of bar- and barbecue is a very healthy way of cooking it's a great way it's a great way it's a great you way. use minimal oil you actually exactly. start roasting the in yes the, yeah you know in my in weddings i tell my clients eat barbecue yeah go all out yeah with barbecue of yeah. course yeah because it's so healthy it's dry it's not oily it's not very fattening yeah and when it's a full gobi and broccoli and mushroom and potato you're full yes yeah so it's satiating you're it's full and uh, 
you've enjoyed going out as well. Yeah. So Punjab Grill typically is the undivided north region. Yes. And you look at the menu, there is no uh, segregation of gluten free and this and that. But you still cook fresh when an order comes yes. to you. Yes. So you do take care of all that. Everything is taken care of. Okay. Now, these days, we get customers who are quite knowledgeable. Yes. And then we also get customers who, who want uh, uh, diabetic food probably that's friendly to yes. for the diabetics. Yes. Low in sugar, no sugar, only jaggery, honey is okay. We get uh, people who are vegans, we get people who are pescatarians. Now, what is good about this is this is lifting the whole restaurant industry as together. Yes. yes. The whole yes. of the scenario changes. It's yes. not just one restaurant. Yes. There are yes. micro cuisines coming up. Yes. Yeah. And we are turning towards grandmother recipes and probably our our uh, ancient recipes, and that's very healthy. So all the knowledge that customers have, it becomes a circle for us to turn out that food, and it also lifts them up. It all the, it, the whole industry is. But do you lifted. also use a lot of these ancient or lost recipes in your restaurant? Yes, we do. We keep uh, investigating that. Okay. Uh, just in March, we are uh, heading towards Punjab. Okay. Uh, four to five chefs. Yes. Uh, we have a five-day tour there. Okay. We will go and uh, and focus on whatever is lost. We also have uh, a vendor. Okay. Now she goes to all the areas to pick up the lost ingredients. Okay. Yes. Now she she goes towards Maharashtra region. She goes also goes to Assam. She also goes to Jammu. She picks up whatever has been grown there. Yes. And then she sells. And she will not say that I will pick up this seed and grow it in this region because it's not. Yeah, it's not possible. Yeah, yeah it's because the soil, weather, water, so support. This is what she's doing. And yeah. she has all the ingredients, all the rice, uh, lentils, unpolished lentils she's got. So this is this is what we are bringing in. That's yeah. lovely. Yeah. So, you know, when, when my file initially, when I interacted with Punjab Grill, I just thought, Okay, so it's Punjabi food. Punjabi food is associated with heaviness, richness, yes. which is a misconception that is in Punjab grill once I tried it. Yeah. But that connotation is there. It is so there. how do you actually help break that, uh, you know, connotation? Well, I believe that's, that's also not wrong. That's also one part of the cuisine. Yes. That's from a Raj Garana, from Maharajas it has flown in. We've had invasions, uh, as I said earlier, that uh, Maharajas and the team, they required heavy, heavy diet food, to yes. carry them through the day. But then it has evolved and there is also a home cuisine which at home we do not cook like that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So we educate everyone and then we also get people who come here and they feel happy for the food that they are having. Yes. The conversations flow over a happy table and everything is really good. So that's what we actually want. Yes. Yeah. So it's not really heavy food that somebody is looking for. Somebody is just looking for some food that can take them back to their childhood memories. This is what I've been having and that's what our purpose is. Yeah. That we want to build a happy place. We want people to go happy. We want everybody to be happy and that's what uh, the basic is. Yeah. And, and a ha happy food makes a happy mind. Totally. And Payal, you focus on uh, yeah. mental yes. health mental and happy mind. And mental wellness and physical wellness together. Yeah, which is quite interesting. Yeah. And the authenticity is also intact yes. over here, which is great. You know, you all are using unpolished lentils, unpolished grains which is so important because that uh, helps di diabetic patients. Yes. The blood sugar levels don't go spiking and exactly. there's no crazy sugar rush. Totally. So that's great. And you also do a bio-individual tweaking. Like if a vegan came in, you'll do a bio-individual, you know, vegan meal for them. So um, that's great for me and my clients, you know, being bio-individual, yeah. having something like a black dal, which is great protein. You know, so yeah, paneer is good. It's got the good fat. Yeah. And if they ate everything responsibly yes. with portion control, I don't see why they would feel bloated or fat yeah. Yeah. Totally. after the meal. Yeah. Totally. I would feel very satisfied if I ate very mindfully without being on my phone. You know, yes. if I ate well and I smiled and spoke to my spouse or to my family, yes. I would that food wouldn't become toxic. Yeah. Or yes. there would be no indigestion. Yes. It would be it would be bliss. Totally. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so how, do, how does food actually affect mental wellness in layman's term? 
I mean, how do you? So I always say that we are what we eat. Yeah. So typically, if there's any kind of a skin problem or inflammation or acidity, we we very easily blame it on our genetics. I'm not blessed. I'm genetically, you know, I haven't got your genes, pile, and I'm like, no, I didn't inherit any good genes. I'm a good Jew, you know. So we ate all the Gujarati foods, but um, I I decide what works for me, what doesn't work for me. So I listen to my body all the time, Sameer. Yeah. I don't eat mindlessly. I can't do it, and I've trained myself. Let me yeah. tell you, I was not born like this. I've trained myself when I eat I I say a prayer I show gratitude very good I eat well I eat with my hands so the enzymes and the bacteria go in uh, I don't waste food I go put my own plate in very good and I make sure I've got all my macros together together yeah so if your macros are together your micros are going into your body yeah so your vitamins minerals everything's taken care of your skin hair nails everything is Glowing. Glowing. You yeah. don't need to take any supplements, or you don't need to go under the knife. You can age gracefully if you eat well. Very well, yes. It's very simple. Listening to your body is, I think, that's yes. Yeah, I think, I think that's the key. Yes. Totally. And at home, how can we all cook to both of you all? You know, replacing certain ingredients with certain things, like a lasagna. I'm just saying, not an Indian dish, or you do a, a you know, butter chicken, or you know, some of these heavy dishes. Which you have maybe on a regular basis, but I want to eat healthier. I want to replace those ingredients with healthier options. What do I do? Where do I go to find it? How does it work? So you're going to kill me if I tell you my substitute <laughs> for lasagna. Yeah. I put lettuce. Lettuce. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can put zucchini. You can put lettuce. Zucchini, lettuce. Yes, you can. So all put the fibrous. Uh, exactly, yeah. and yes. then you bake your lasagna and you eat it. Yes. Guilt free. That yeah. entire lasagna is mine. Yeah. Guilt free. Fantastic. Yeah. Totally. So there's simple hacks, simple yeah. swaps, simple tweaks, and always, um, I always remember to keep my primary foods and secondary foods in place. Okay. So you know, primary foods being my relationships, my career. my spiritual practice my exercise and the secondary food being the food on my plate so if i get everything that's why i'm an integrative nutritionist yes so if i put everything together and balance a 60 40 70 30 80 20 90 10 as and when it need be i think then everything is great yeah yeah and chef what do you uh, you know how do you advise people to actually eat healthier at home or while they're dining out at a restaurant how well, does that well what what i uh, believe is we need to stay away from the preservatives preserved food whatever is dried food so dried food you keep it away don't don't just as much as possible whatever is fresh we keep the fresh in uh if you are making a masala rather than buying it from the market i will suggest that you buy a whole masala and then grind mix, it mix it up grind it and keep very small quantities very small quantities because over time it loses its aroma it loses its flavor it loses its property everything goes away and also believe me uh talking about bacteria wherever there is moisture wherever there is ambient temperature which is around 38 degrees is the most volatile temperature for it is the best <laughs> temperature for them bacteria and there is food protein is the best food for bacteria to grow now wherever all these things are bacteria will grow now we have certain foods rice chili flakes we have uh, spices that we dry out everything has bacteria now certain bacteria may be killed but certain bacteria very harmful they form spores they form a cocoon around them and they go into hibernation they stay for long they are the most dangerous for years yes, on yes, yes, exactly yes. Yeah. and we need to look after e coli h pylori exactly yes, yes. so we, we need to uh, keep this in mind and stay away from the longer life of whatever we are grinding and keeping in our fridges or maybe in our homes because moisture is there we keep opening the lid you know how humid it is you are entertaining them so we keep that away kachri kachri is a very good fruit in rajasthan Now if you no, fry you yes, fry the kachri you, you uh, yes you uh, it can be eaten there's pickle also pickle. made out of it there's chutney made out of it yeah. there's kachri mass made out of it kachri is a very good tenderizer for meat 
very good tenderizer. It's almost like a papaya paste. If you put, put raw papaya paste, it just melts the meat. Kachri is also used the same way. Kachri has a very healthy food also. Yeah. People eat a lot in Rajasthan. See, both both are different things. Now, kachri only grows in deserts. That's that's what the uh, temperature requires. Now, in Rajasthan, they will have kachri as a fruit, and then whenever they need, they dry and then they grind it to use it wherever they want as a tang. It, it's it's a very tangy uh, yeah, fruit. It is. Now, if you keep it for a very long time, it loses its flavor. The tang will go away. It will just be as a tenderizer. The whole thing goes away. We don't want that. They don't. They don't do it. For us, papaya, raw papaya paste we use. Yes, that's a tenderizer, and that's why people also keep uh, uh, a lot of uh, women away from papaya during their pregnancy. So, these things we keep in mind while uh, uh, our food we, we put it in our food. In case it is healthy, now kachri powder, since it's not very well available in Bombay, we will not use kachri powder in Bombay. If we are more closer to Rajasthan, if I open Punjab Green in Rajasthan, instead of raw papaya, I will use kachri. kachri it's, yeah. it's one of the best things. So, uh, this is what we keep in mind. Yeah. Healthy is whatever is around you, keep it fresh, as fresh as possible. You, you have a very healthy diet. Totally. Good, that's super. Any anything to add, Payal? No, you know, you're probably the second out of ten chefs I've seen who spit himself. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, the restaurant is speaking for itself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, having yeah, you as the chef, yeah. very yeah. frankly. That's great. Thank you, Chef Amit. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you, Payal, for, for being well. with us at the wonderful session. Thank you all. Thank Stay you tuned all. for more. Thank you.